So we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order, Amanda. And uh, we're gonna recite the Pledge of Allegiance. If you have a flag, great. If you don't, <laughs> we'll just go ahead and start. Ready? <laughs> I pledge, thank you, Eric. I You're pledge welcome. allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and, and to the Republic, Republic which it stands, one, one nation, God, 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 indivisible, with liberty God, and justice for, justice all. for all. All right, thank you. Don't let that drop there. Hey, Rob. I see Rob's joined us good. Okay. Okay, uh, Rob, just FYI, Dave Hewitt's not going to be on today. Looks like we have everybody here. Um, so the meeting's been called to order. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Amanda, did you see my email about the uh, agenda that you'd sent out versus the one on the packet? Yes, and I apologize okay. for that. I sent you an email back that oh, sorry. the one just... on the website is correct. Um, Eileen thought that she was going to be able to send her a suspense book, but um, she could not. Okay. So that is not on the agenda. Okay. All right. That's good. No problem. Okay. Excuse me here. <clears throat> okay. So the next item would be public speak. Okay. So first up, we have. Rochelle Strimple? Uh, no, thank you, not tonight. Okay, thank you. Looks like the only other person we have on is Joanne Hebert. Joanne. Also, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hearing no more public speaking, uh, We'll go on to additions and uh, excuse me, additions and deletions of the agenda item. This is item number three on your agenda. Uh, does anybody have any additions or deletions to the agenda? All right, um, hearing none, I guess we can move on. Item number four on the meeting agenda is the town administrator's report. COVID-19 response, Eric. Okay, so I just wanna to touch on a couple uh, relatively, you know, not, nothing super important. For those of you who are interested, the town's road work plan is on the uh, town's website. It's a little hard to find, but it is there. Uh, the second item of interest is the town has formally been accepted by the state and federal government um, into the 8020 uh, bridge program for replacing Bunker Hill Bridge. So we, or I opted to utilize a program where the state retains the, uh, um, essentially the design authority for the bridge as opposed to the town. And the reason is we just don't have the staff to do a really good job and using that program has for the most part shaved a year or two off of the design phase of the project and will get us to construction faster. Um, the other advantage is the state pays the cost of the design. So uh, we were fortunate to be able to get into that program. It was not offered originally a couple of years ago when the town first uh, tried to go this route. Um, so the, the state has um, assigned the project to close Jensen and Miller as a consulting engineer. Um, so, and I'm in contact with the engineer that's assigned to our project. So, so we are making progress on that again. And when this budget is adopted, the, uh, there will be a pool of money uh, that we're going to allocate for this um, in the budget. Um, as I've hinted to already, we've done a fair amount of work lately on redoing the electrical system in the public works building. We're very fortunate that Lenco Electric comped us um, about 130 hours of labor and uh, a bunch of materials. So we were, I was quite happy to get that in. 
And what that has allowed me to do is also do some masonry work that that building needed. One of the problems we've had pretty much forever is that there's no rear like personnel door, you know, so either you're using an overhead, you know, a 10 foot wide, huge overhead door to get out the back of the building, or you're just walking all the way around to the front. So we're going to put a pedestrian, you know, a, a person door in, which we should have done years ago for OSHA compliance anyway. Um, the other thing is that we have looked pretty hard at using a program called Easy IQC for the connectivity grant project. So that is something that is administered, administered through Capital Regional Council of Governments. Um, and basically what they do is they have a consultant that will uh, both a a kind of construction management consultant and also a general contractor that has a set price schedule by task for doing the work. So um, we've looked at that. It's well within the budget that we have for the federal money. And we're also going to be able to include one of the library's priorities, which is redoing the ramp up to the front entrance and the step up to the front entrance of the library and redoing the railing, which has been welded a couple times and has some problems. So basically the project came in, the connectivity portion came in a little bit under budget. So what we're doing is we're taking the difference um, because it's use it or lose it, it's, it's state money. And we're also gonna do the two things that the library wanted, which us to do out of capital improvement this year, which is the front handicapped access and the stairs and fix the railing. Um, so so that's, that looks like that's going to come out really well for us. Um, Town Hall, we've got a couple small to medium sized projects going right now. Um, I've been getting yelled at pretty steadily since I've been on this job for not having the flagpole out in front of the building lit. And I get it, it is a federal requirement. You need to either take your flag down every night or light it. So I got a couple quotes in from the local electricians to see, um, and we should be able to slide that in in this year's budget with, our, with what we have existing. Um, the IT upgrade to the town hall is going relatively well. The firewalls are in place and the, the new server is installed up and running. And we are successfully backing up all our data, um, you know, on a regular schedule now, which we had not been prior to this, um, you know, since the dawn of, of the town of Andover. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, we are looking at figuring out how to jump to the next part of that project, which is to get the fiber connection switch from cable to fiber and also start looking at the VoIP phone systems. Um, so those are un ongoing. Um, we also, Kirk will probably tell you that the tanker is on the way. We should have our fire department tanker within you know, a month and a half or so. And Kirk, you can give any updates you got on that. The update I have is uh, the truck is complete. We are doing our virtual final inspection on Friday at uh, 2 p.m. at the fire station with the uh, sales representative. So we should have it, uh, I would say, within probably two weeks. Excellent. We'll be, um, over, we'll, we'll be over to see you with an invoice um, once I get it from uh, uh, New England Fire. Excellent. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is we, you guys approved... Uh, some transfers from the, the town snowplow budget last month. Uh, we purchased the material handling arm um, for our loader, which is good because we're about to use that uh, in several days for the transfer station rebuilding. Um, and CIP also agreed to recommend the purchase of a material spreader for the back of one of the plow trucks as well as a basically heavy duty blower unit for the front of our small tractor, which is a little Steiner. It's up to this point, it's been set up specifically as a mower, 
but that unit will also take a large scale blower. So since we're, it does not look like we're gonna be able to buy a roadside mower, which we would have bought with the blower unit, um, instead of being able to do that for the next couple of years, we're gonna plan on using the, the small Steiner with the large blower attachment. Um, those both look like they're gonna be able to be purchased this year with existing money. Um, so there doesn't seem to be any issues with that. Uh, the last item is the transfer station upgrade and rebuilding will start on June 1st. They're cutting the power to the compactors in the old shed June 1st and starting to disassemble everything. Um, we're hoping to have the majority of that project done in a month and, you know, at least some of the compactors back up and running uh, around July 1. So unfortunately for roughly a month, we're gonna go without bulky waste because we're only gonna be able to use half the side and we're gonna to need to use the open containers for trash and recycling. So there's already been a little bit of negative feedback about that, but there's not really, you know, without increasing the cost by bringing in temporary power, you know, and trying to relocate you know, one of the compactors to the other side and plug it in. There's just not really a practical way to get around it. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of what's going on in the town financially uh, that you guys need to be aware of unless you have any questions for me. Mark, you're muted. Thank you. I said, I don't have any questions other than curious about what that blower is usually used for. Uh, it's usually used for just wherever you want a super heavy duty leaf, you know, vehicle mounted leaf blower, you know, sides of the roads, trails. If we had it right now, we'd certainly be using it prepping for, uh, you know, for chip sealing roads. Um, to blow the roads off. Right now, we don't really have one that's capable of doing that, so we're just sweeping. Um, but it would it would be used for that pretty regularly, and then used to blow off the trails, you know, in the spring and the fall to get all the organic matter off the trail surface. So okay. those are the two major roads and trails. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any other questions for Eric? Okay, hearing none, I guess we'll go to agenda item five, which is the treasurer's report. Okay, Barbara. Yes, um, the audit is complete and I'm still waiting for a clean copy, an electronic copy that isn't stamped draft. And um, Eric reminded me today that that still hasn't been received. I thought maybe they were waiting for payment, but that was taken care of last week. Eric, you were CC'd in on my email and you didn't hear anything back, I take it. I did not, and I had separately emailed Michael about that you did. Um, right. already, like last okay. week. So yeah. I, I don't know what the issue is. We have a copy that appears to be complete, but you know, we want the yeah. one that's they're finally willing to bless and that's sign. That's not stamped. <sighs> I I will Correct. try calling him. He's not really available by phone. Um, generally, email is better than leaving voicemail, but I'll just keep on him. And as soon as I have it, I'll send it out to everyone. And then along the same line, I had mentioned um, a presentation uh, by Michael on the audit. And if you are meeting um, in what month are we in? Okay, we're still in May. If you're meeting we're in, in May. June and he is available, depending on what's on your agenda, if it's a it's a uh, easy agenda, would you like me to check with him? See if he Abs can. Absolutely. You know, yeah. he doesn't have to appear in person, obviously, so we can we can work okay. it out remotely. So. I will. I will definitely um, make him aware of that then. Um, budget summary. You have those um, in your packet. Eric and I continue to pour through those department by department, line by line, looking for money to reallocate. I've been contacting people 
getting feedback, making notes, getting a lot of notes together about what is not going to be used. The big budgets were um, elections and registrar. So talked to Wally, got a list of things, money he knows he's not using, several thousand dollars um, that we will reallocate. And I also talked to Kathy of Senior Transportation. And uh, that had quite a bit of money left in because they discontinued that program um, in March. Other ones I've been sending emails to, I'm looking for things where there's like a thousand dollars or a two thousand dollar expense that looks like it may not be spent or kind of accumulative in the in the in a budget that exceeds a thousand dollars so i've sent out some more emails yesterday and today to people just asking them to get back to me um let me know if they have invoices to pay or anything they think they're going to be spending otherwise eric and i are going to start to make a list and then have that ready we hope for the um finance i'm uh, sorry selectman meeting if not we can do it in july we don't have to do it in june we can do it in july but we can do those reallocations um so we get the money spent in this fiscal year uh any questions about that yes. Is there a particular goal with this spending if we're trying to or trying to clean this up? I mean, Eric, do you is have some things? Is there a particular goal with this spending that we're doing? Are we trying to just clean up some things, Eric? Do you have, are you trying to find the money for a thing something in particular, or is this just a general exercise in cleanup? So part of it is just a general exercise in cleanup. Um, part of it is reallocating to the areas we, where we are still over in our budget right now. And the third thing is to be able to hopefully add to some of the capital funds that we have um, because in some cases like for instance i know the transfer station project is going to go over budget what's authorized this year and it's going to go over budget because when cip originally allocated the money they were not anticipating any major electrical work um, you know, and that's about $35,000. So that's a really big oops. Um, everything else other than electrical would have fit under the original budget, but we just, CIP was not anticipating that. So part of it is to free up money for that project. And the second is just because we are definitely, you know, compared to where we wanted to be, kind of not really funding the road work at the level we wanted and the other capital funds by having by having made capital funds and assigning them already we can transfer excess money directly into the capital fund and then it's it, it essentially rolls over to next year and it's spendable you know whenever we need it so that that's where i'm going with this is try to try to accomplish the stuff we know we had to or some of the things we know we were cutting out of next year's budget because we pulled way back in the budget and basically front load as much of that on this year's budget as we can. Yeah, so it's, it's a mechanism to um, not have that money flow in and, and, and pad the fund balance because you've been doing a good job or working toward getting your fund balance at a reasonable uh, percentage. So it's a mechanism to set the money aside um, without having to go through the um, the other process, which would be to reallocate it out of fund balance because that would take um, town meeting. So this is Eric says, let's get into some funds um, so it's spendable as it's needed. Um, and along that same line, uh, the, the revenue, um, which I'm gonna talk about next, if you look at the report um, running way ahead of um, budgeted, so that is going to be contributing to your fund balance as well. And so I'm even more interested in kind of just moderating that flow into fund balance because it's possible to do it on the expense side if things can be reallocated to a fund so it's available to spend because it will roll over. So just looking at the revenue report, I just brought mine up 
um, in my system. Just some highlights I want to mention. Um, if you look at education cost sharing, it's in the middle of page two. We have received everything we are going to from the state. We've gotten our um, three payments and we are in excess of $134,000 there. So um, there isn't anything in revenue that's really running under what was budgeted. Uh, town clerk money um, is always a good source of revenue and that's coming in uh, heavily. Is that a question? I think, I think it just got an echo, Barbara. For those of you following along on the PDF file, it's actually page 15 on the packet file that she's referring to. Educational cost sharing is right in the middle, number 219. Thanks, Mark. So of all the uh, things that were budgeted in revenue, everything is really running very, very um, positive. And the only thing that's going to come up short and it's not going to really make a big difference is transfer station receipts because they come in kind of split June, July. So the money that has come in, there was 36,000 budgeted, 22,700 has come in. So that would have come in last July. We would have anticipated more money this June, but nothing will be coming in because that whole program has been put on hold for 60 days. Um, but that deficit of 13,000 in that line item is not going to make a big difference because so many of the other line items are running over. Um, had a conversation with the tax collector. The third, I'm sorry, fourth quarter um, payments for this year, which were due um, April, April collections. She said there wasn't a real difference in um, collections for this year, last year, and May and June are not heavy collection months. So I would anticipate that um, tax collections are going to be healthy um, when um, everything is put together in the, um, in the financial statements. I, I think you're still gonna have a, a pretty pretty good flow, pretty good positive flow to fund balance between taxes, revenue, and even residual um, expenditures. Um, that's it for revenue expenditures, unless there are questions. And then just moving on to TAR spending. I think I mentioned this at an earlier meeting. We did get the two TAR payments. I don't think they're reflected in your report, because I think that report was printed before the, we got the TAR money posted to our accounting system. But that was, um, it was what was budgeted. And I want to say 190,000 went into your TAR fund. And that's it. We don't have any over expenditure requests. The over expenditure report is in your packet. Um, again, being close to the close of the year, we're I'm looking at what we have to reallocate to cover those um, overages. And it's all part of the, um, the reallocation that Eric and I are, are working on. Right, and I, I just want to inject one thing. You know, the one area that we are going over again more than we would like right now is we had switched to using uh hebron the town of hebron parks and recs for all our uh, athletic field maintenance because we were having a lot of problems with our previous and basically what we were doing before is we had a cost sharing agreement with somebody who used our field um and then we were going to do it differently this year. We were going to take over the maintenance and then charge them. But obviously, since we're not letting them use the field, we're not charging them. So we're about $8,000 short on revenue um, for that. And 
but we still have to pay for the field maintenance. So we are going to go over quite a, a pretty significant chunk in field maintenance, but we, that should be easy to cover out of, uh, you know, contingency. There's, we have plenty of money available to cover it. Um, so that's the only one that's not really on your list. I got the bill from them, you know, late this afternoon. So, so I wasn't going to do up the paperwork for today, you know, without and just spring it on you. So we'll spring it on you next month. Yeah, that was the other thing I was going to mention too, is we haven't even touched the 50,000 in contingency. Anything I've looked at to reallocate to cover shortages hasn't even begun to touch that 50,000. So you're going to be a bit, you know, flush with funds again, which is a good position to be in. That's it for me. Okay, Eric, you have anything else to add to that? Uh, no, I think that pretty well covers it. Okay, item number six is uh, budget transfer supplemental appropriation 6A. Did you say we do not have any today? Nothing, nothing. Nope. Nope. Okay, moving along, uh, item 6B, over expenditure requests and also nothing, correct? Not at this time. Okay. So we'll move on to item seven, which is just kind of here as a placeholder. This is the governor's executive order, uh, basically relative to the uh, production of the budget uh, this year. And I don't know, Eric, do you want to recap this process? I think we've kind of gone over it ad nauseum, but you know, yeah. essentially, yeah. The, the only thing I would say that has changed is between this month and the last month, the governor came out with executive order 7JJ. And all that said was basically, hey, when I first told you that it was the board of, you know, the finance that was going to have to pass the budget and you were going to have to do it without a public vote, I meant it. Um, yeah. That was basically his bottom, his, his, the other executive order basically said, what I told you the first time is correct and quit trying to weasel out of it and, and do something else. Um, so we're, we're basically in a place where you have the authority um, and also the obligation to pass a budget and set a mill rate. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? All right. Um, hearing none, I guess we'll uh, move on to item number eight, which is new business. Um, going back over to the budget here, our packet agenda, so make sure I'm on the right thing. Uh, feedback from the town's budget Google site. Um, Amanda's uh, shared everything, so we didn't really have much that came up um, in addition to the last couple of days. There's one or two items that I think came up, um, I think it's, these have been dispersed to the uh, Board of Finance. Um, just you know, kind of reiterating some of the things we've heard already. There was a comment uh, felt that we should cut more from this school budget. There was a comment that felt that we should cut less, uh, especially given the fact that they weren't sure what kind of expenditures they would, you know, we might have to put into place to, to accommodate any, any COVID related um, actions in order that might be taken to open the schools. So, you know, they, uh, does anybody have any comments about the, the feedback we've received so far? I was just chiming in and say, I, I got the same uh, feedback from, uh, you know, about the cut that we made during our marathon meeting. We made like a small additional cut, if you remember, to get to yeah. a nice round 4% reduction for AES. And, uh, you know, I got a little pushback from that. Um, in another venue. <clears throat> and so I, you know, I basically promised that tonight, I would at least raise the possibility of putting that back in. So FYI, I'll be making a motion to that effect at some point. <clears throat> okay. Any other input or comments? Nothing else from the board. So I, you all. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Eric. 
So I was just going to say you all should have received an email uh, one earlier from me today or yesterday, and then a reiteration from Mark Brinker. Um, one of the outstanding issues that we had was the request from the fire department to increase the line item that takes care of physicals for the fire department. Now, one thing I would note is that yes, they are definitely under budget this year, but if you think about it, from the time we told them, okay, we have the money, you can go ahead and you know do a bunch of physicals this spring, we're not in a position where we can get the fire department physicals so that money will essentially go unspent this year, simply because right now we're not doing, they're still not really doing discretionary procedures. We might sometime later in June be able to get some of the fire department members in this year. Um, basically what the fire chief Ron Mike had asked for was that total line item to go up to $5,000. Um, and I looked at what the town's reasonable expenditures are for physicals. And that number for the town side of it is about $1,000. The Board of Finance had already made a decision at one of your previous meetings. You had motioned to put that money in the fire department's budget, not in the town general budget. So one of the motions I gave you essentially did that. And you have a couple options depending on whether you agree with increasing that line item or not. Um, and that's pretty much all I had other than uh, on the recommendation of Barbara Griffin, we said it would be smarter instead of leaving the line item for the software transition uh, to put that in basically its own capital fund or separate fund as opposed to leaving it as the line item where it was. So, but that doesn't have any monetary, that's just an accounting uh, issue. Okay, thanks, Eric. Um, hopefully everybody had a chance to review those suggested motions. Uh, again, those are just suggestions to just provide some of the framework and structure for the language that we might use if somebody uh, wants to move or make a motion along those along those lines. So that's that's really what that is. Um, so I'd like to address, I guess, the, the point that uh, uh, Eric raised first about the fire department. And we did agree that we wanted to move that uh, budget Amount, budgeted amount for the fire department physicals into the fire department budget. I think everybody was okay with that. Um, the real question I think before us then, if if I'm rec if I'm right on that, that everybody is comfortable with that, and we will talk about it, is do we increase the amount that was originally requested? And I think it was goes from is it two thousand to five thousand, Eric? Was the difference? Uh, I think. Currently, our, we budget for uh, combined between town and fire department, we budgeted $2,500. Uh, Ronnie Mike asked that total number to go up to $5,000. Of that $5,000, roughly uh, $1,000 would be spent on the town side, and roughly $4,000 would be spent on the fire department side. Okay. If I if I can comment, Mark, yep, on that, ahead, and we just dis we discussed it at the, at the Board of Fire Commissioners prior to uh, Chief Mike making the request. Um, that that account has always been underfunded, both by the town and us, uh, when the town took uh, over all the uh, all of the physicals, both for the uh, the town crew and the fire department. Um, the increase is, the reason for the increase is because of an increase in membership, which uh, you know is is no. That's something that we really needed badly um, thing, of course, yeah. is, is members. So um, that's the reason why we you know, asked for the increase originally for up to the $5,000 um, is for the increase in membership. So yeah. that's a I also, I've also understood that it was a little difficult sometimes to get uh, the previous administration to actually approve going out and getting the physicals done in some cases. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, so that's another reason it would have been underspent or lower. Right. All right, thanks, Kurt. Other board members, you have uh, questions or comments about the uh, increase amount?
Okay, hearing none. I mean, I'll, I'll say generally I'm in favor of this. It seems like that's um, a reasonable request. Uh, uh, the fire department provided, provided some rationale for it at, at Eric's, you know, at Eric's uh, request. They put put it together. They um, explained it. Kurt just added a little bit to there. I mean, we kind of kind of knew that already. I think that was in the original uh, explanation for the additional increase request. Mark, would a, would a motion be in order? It it would. We could we can go ahead and, and do that. Um, the, if you want to, we can we could either motion you know the the motions that Eric suggested um, around the you know with his his motions that he put in there. He suggested uh, combining everything after we kind of discussed the budget in total. But we certainly could motion that individually. Yeah. You could do well, I'd like to make a motion, on, at least on the behalf of the fire department, that the uh, the requested funds for physicals uh, uh, you know, be allocated. So we're talking, we're looking at, um, if we look at the uh, thing Eric put out and that you edited, Mark, yeah. uh, possible motion number one is that, that it looks like a two-parter, reducing one item, line item and increasing another. Am I reading that right? Yes, that's correct. What that does is it gets the fire department's physicals outside of the town's physical line item. It transfers that money to the, essentially what's controlled by the Board of Fire Commissioners, and it increases it, the total spending, by $2,000. That's what that, right. that first two lines. All right, so... Motion does. Why don't we go ahead? I, so I can, that's the I can, first part. I can uh, make it this two-parter. Hmm? Go ahead, Mark. What? So I was going to say the other part of that suggested motion was to make that transition from the software from an expense line to a fund line. Right. So that's you know that's. I mean, you know, it's it's just one motion, it's two motions. It yeah, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Really matter. Um, I was just trying to do it kind of formally, so yeah. I could make a motion that we. Do two things. Reduce line item 01-0141-280 physicals from 3,000 to 1,000. And the second part is to increase item 100-04-0401-800 from $136,650 to $140,650. Okay. Which I think was what Kurt was trying to basically do. Is that correct, yep. Kurt? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I, I was I, just I, reading. I was just doing it for the record. That's all. Okay. All right. Just wanted to clarify there. So I, Kurt, no, I knew that's what that's, Kurt that's just... what you're. That, so we'll we'll list Kurt as the pro providing that motion. Is that what you wanted to motion, Kurt? Yes. I'll second okay. it then. All right. And Rob seconds it. We have any further discussion from the board members? Okay. Hearing none. Let's go ahead and take a vote. Um, I'll go around my screen. Uh, Diane? Aye. Okay. Rob? Aye. Louise? Aye. Kurt? Thank you, Robin. Aye. Okay. And Linda? You still aye. There? Okay. And I'll also vote aye. Uh, vote passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Rob. Okay. So we'll make that change in the budget. All right. So the next item that uh, was also brought before us is a suggestion to change the software uh, uh, line item uh, to from the $30,000, which I believe is an expense item to create a capital fund for software transition to accommodate the new software, the new financial software that's going to be needed for the town. Uh, does anybody have any discussion over that? Seems to make sense to me and make it capital. Absolutely. Yeah. Should it make yeah. sense to make it a capital fund? I would agree with that. Any further discussion? Okay. Do anybody want to make a motion? Sure. I'll, uh, I'll move that we reduce the software transition from 30,000 to zero in the operating budget and create a capital fund. Uh, likewise, for thirty thousand dollars instead. I'll second that. Yep, thank you, Louise. Any further discussion? 
Okay, let's take a vote. Diane? Aye. Rob? Aye. Linda? Aye. Louise? Aye. And Kurt? Aye. All of also vote aye, so that's also passes unanimously. Okay. So those two things uh, together are some of the two key things we wanted to address uh, based on prior conversations and suggestions from the town treasurer, um, which really kind of takes us back to the budget in total. Um, and I think, uh, Rob, you said something you wanted to, right. to make a statement and possibly make a motion about. Um, right, so uh, I've heard some concern uh, about the, the additional, I believe it was 13,600 we cut uh, in our April meeting, <clears throat> uh, it was kind of an arbitrary thing. We were kind of rounding their budget to a 4% decrease and, um, you know, got a little pushback on that and having thought that through it's, it's, it's not a huge amount of money one way or the other, but, um, as a result of that conversation, I basically decided that I was going to re-raise that issue. And so what I was going to do is I'll make a motion that we restore that 13.6 to the AAS line item, to the budget. And then let's chat about it. Okay, do I have a second on that motion? I will second Rob's motion. Okay, Kurt seconds. Okay, so let's, let's have some discussion. I'll just add one thing that the concern that was raised to me and maybe the same that was on the feedback, I, I didn't actually double check um, the website, but uh, it was basically, you know, do they need a para? Do they need, you know, an extra to whatever the requirements that are going to come down for reopening are? There's a certain amount of uncertainty to that, uh, and there was concern that you know we reduce their flexibility a little. That's all, and I think I think part of it is also just a, the feeling that they had worked real hard to get down to the number they got to, and then we kind of took another whack at them. Yeah, I think that that's a, it's a fair statement. It wasn't a very big whack, um, you know, and, and part of negotiating is, is, is coming into a position. I, I personally voted against uh, reducing the AES budget further because I thought they did a, a pretty good job. Uh, but my, my personal position now is that, you know, we, we, we made that decision then. Um, it, it's absolutely fair to bring it back up uh, based on the feedback we received. Um, but we've we've gotten a lot of feedback on both sides of that issue. I'm I'm comfortable with where we landed in the last meeting, uh, so you know I personally probably would not be in favor of making any changes at this time. And I kind of follow, feel the same as Mark does on that. And plus, we don't know what the surplus is going to be for the education coming out of this year. Is that still up in the air a bit? We so, still don't have a figure. So I had that conversation with Laura um, and briefly with Sally, and they're basically doing the same thing that we're doing because they're coming into a fairly uncertain budgetary time. They are front loading every expense they can, you know, and offloading, you know. Basically, their intention is, is they don't think the Board of Finance is going to allow them their 2% give back anyway um, to be put in their, their equivalent of the uh, town contingency fund. So their intention is to spend what they have in this year's budget to try to front load as much expense as they can for next year. So I wouldn't anticipate us getting much back from the school this year. There's a part of me that understands that thinking, but I, I'm not sure it's a wise use of the funds. Or I hope they use the money wisely, I guess is what I would say. So I, I, we all know that you know times are gonna be a little uncertain. So anything left over, I mean, we did not provide that money. We did not allow them to keep that money this year, but it was for a specific reason. They just didn't provide any rationale for keeping the money, in my view. Uh, we asked for some reasoning and we really weren't provided any, any solid reasoning or any, any, any rationale why that money would, would be needed. And I think that, you know, in, in my opinion, had they done so, I, I would have certainly considered it. Um, 
you know, so next year isn't the same as this year. Now, I could easily see them needing that money for various things, uh, given the uncertain times. So my, my personal view is I'm not sure that that was a wise choice on their part, but uh, I, I understand why they did it, I guess. Well, I, I, uh, I seconded uh, Rob's motion because, as you know, I voted no for the uh, increase uh, when, we, when we took the, the, the vote. Uh, based on the fact that I felt that they had cut um, what was requested of them, you know, from us, and uh, I think they did their due diligence in, in, in getting to that to that uh, that number. Um, I think the thirteen thousand dollar cut to bring it to four percent was just really really picking at it, and uh, you know that's basically my my reason. I, you know. It's a it's a it's a it's a rebuilding year for them. The superintendent, um, who knows what's going to happen with the principal, who's trying to be the co-superintendent. We have a committee going through uh, uh, shared services or whatever else for AES. So I think it's a you know it's a huge year coming up for the uh, the school in general, and uh, big, that's basically my reason. <laughs> Okay, any other comment or input from other board members? Louise, Linda? I'm happy with the budget the way it is. We worked hard to get it here. And I'm, I don't know, I'm happy with the way it is. I echo that too, because that was a tough meeting, the last meeting to get it down to that. And I hate to see it turn around. I just have one point of information. If you did put that back in the budget, um, the estimated mill rate with that back in the budget would be 35.66 for whatever it's worth. Okay, it's always good to know. Any further discussion on this issue? Okay, I propose we vote on the motion. Uh, again, going around my screen, Diane? No. Rob? Yes. Linda? No. Louise? No. Okay. Kurt? Yes. I'm gonna vote no also. Where does that leave us? I think that leaves us four, four to two. Motion fails. The motion uh, is turned down. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, I think it was absolutely worth talking about and considering. Okay. Um, further discussion on the budget as it stands before us, given our last meeting. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to break up, bring up, point out, change? Okay, hearing nothing, does somebody want to make a motion about uh, uh, adopting the budget as proposed? I'll make the notion, the motion to adopt it as proposed. Okay, thank you, Louise. Anybody want, to, anybody want to second? I'll second. Okay, Diane seconds. Um, further discussion? So just as a clarification, we are adopting a budget with a total budget, including RAM of $12,535,376, which will result in a mill rate of 35.61. That is what's up for discussion. Correct, that's what I have. And what was the increase on that again, Eric? Uh, the resulting mill rate would be 35.61. Oh, you want to know the- The increase from last year. Year to year, mill rate. dollars increase. or percent or percent. Mil, mill rate? 1.77%. 1.77, okay. 7, 7. okay. Uh, Let 
Yes, correct. 1.77% mill rate increase. And the total change in taxation would be 255,000. No, wait, Never mind. Ignore that last statement. That was incorrect. Uh, I say that's so that's basically that's, a mill. Right. Yeah. No, that's incorrect. That was Yeah, ignore that statement. All right. Okay, so any further discussion? We went through it line by line by line at last meeting, um, but you know we have another thirty days and a little bit more feedback under our belts. I personally don't see any reason to change what we've done. Um, anybody else have any any comments? Going once. Going twice. Well, I guess let's go ahead and vote. Diane? Aye. Rob? Aye. Linda? Aye. Louise? Aye. Kurt? Aye. And I'll also vote aye. So that passes unanimously to adopt the budget as proposed. Uh, total amount of $12,535,376 or the resulting mill rate of 35.61, which I think Eric calculated to be, or Eric Barber said 1.77% increase over last year. Uh, and that's a tough one. Thank you, board. This hasn't been easy. I know when we had a lot bigger plans for this year, but things being what they are, I think we did what we needed to do. Okay. The, uh, I think the next item that people have brought up or have been brought before us is the idea of uh, establishing some capital reserve funds for the purposes of managing the work that needs to be done next year. Um, we had some proposed language, um, but uh, of course, this is where we where I, where I actually discuss this. I mean, to me personally, setting up these funds makes a lot of sense. It just provides the not only the guidance, but also the mechanism by which the uh, town employees are you know, set to do what we've asked them to do. So to me, it makes sense. Um, any discussion or uh, comments on that? Would anybody like to make a motion? Usually the chair doesn't make a motion, but I will in this case, <laughs> according to Robert's rules, but uh, I'll say that I'm gonna, I'll make a motion to establish a capital reserve funds um, as follows for the next fiscal year. First, a fund entitled Bunker Hill Bridge Replacement Fund for the purposes of utilizing the federal local bridge replacement program to replace this aging Bunker Hill Bridge. Uh, secondly, a fund entitled Building Town Building Maintenance Fund for the purpose of creating a permanent fund for the maintenance of town buildings and structures. Third, a fund entitled Road Work Fund for the purpose of creating a permanent fund for the maintenance, paving, and reconstruction of town roads. Fourth, a fund entitled Tree Removal Fund for the purposes of creating a permanent fund for the trimming and removal of trees that are safety hazards on the town roads. Five, a fund entitled Bridge and Culvert Fund for the purposes of creating a permanent fund for the maintenance, evaluation, engineering, and replacement of bridges and culverts that do not qualify for state or federal funding. Uh, lastly, a fund entitled the Connectivity Grant Fund for the purposes of creating a permanent fund for money received from the State of Connecticut DOT Connectivity Grant. Uh, further, I would propose in this motion that it is the intention of the Board of Finance that money placed in these special funds shall be considered budgeted in the year they are placed in the funds, and therefore uh, they are spendable uh, without requiring a separate town meeting. Okay. That is the motion before us. Does anybody want to second that motion? I'll, I'll second. second. I'll go ahead. 
Okay. <laughs> Louise seconds. Thank yep. you. Uh, any discussion or questions about this? The last bit about, uh, you know, spending without spending from the funds without a town meeting, we're, we're sure that's, we're not going to get any uh, pushback on that from anyone. I, I think that's per the charter. This is kind of the thing we have to do. It's been designated by the board of finance for the fund guidelines. Okay. That's Eric? kind of what I was asking. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Eric, you want to comment on that further? Yeah. So that was a, a long question in a series of legal interpretations that I asked from the town's attorney. Um, because we realize it's kind of burdensome and expensive to go back to a town meeting every time you want to buy something. But if you don't put them in capital funds, then it, everything automatically runs to fund balance at the end of the year. So projects, as they often do, that bridge years, you have a hard time dealing with unless you make them special revenue funds or capital reserve funds, basically. So... Uh, if as long as in your budget statement, you state right up front that we are putting the money into these funds in this budget cycle with the intent to spend them, you've essentially allocated it and budgeted it and therefore you can spend without going to down meeting. That is his interpretation of our charter. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. That's, that's what I was asking. I just wanted to make sure it was square with that. Okay. Yeah, in the town, the uh, town of Andover, the, uh, the 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 fund policy uh, that was adopted back in 2016 by the Board of Finance. You know, one of the one of the statements there is that the Board of Finance determines assignments by way of formal resolution on behalf of the town to document the town's intent to use available resources for specific purposes. The applicable assignments do not require formal town meeting approval. Review of assignments will be performed by the Board of Finance at regularly scheduled meetings. So that is kind of where some of that comes from as well. I think I remember that. <laughs> I was just going to make a comment too. It's really clean, and Adrian had mentioned this to me, and I think it was the way you had set up the garage fund and that multi-use building fund. When you do it through the budgeting process, that's that meets the requirements for the finance board approval. And because step two would ordinarily be that this budget would be approved by your um, legislative body, everything is very clean. So just all of these funds are in your budget. And so you're just kind of voting on, on the allocation of these. So um, except for the connectivity grant, which will not appear in the budget because there are no town funds for that. So that will just be set up off to the side um, it'll appear in the financial statements, but it will never appear in the budgets. The rest are all right in the budget, so they're they're very visible. The whole thing is very clean. So, and I know there was that back and forth this afternoon, and I started to look at what you did, Mark, and also just at the financial statements. Right now, they're all in a part of the budget labeled uh, fund transfers because the money will be moved from the budget into these individual funds, whether they're set up as capital reserve or special revenue or, you know, minor funds. That's kind of like, I'll probably have a discussion with the auditor, you know, about just actually how to pigeonhole them, but that's just, um, you know, a bookkeeping function, but otherwise um, it looks very clean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just questioned whether it was capital capital reserve fund because you know something like tree work is you know, exactly. but you know, looking looking at the different fund definitions, there really isn't one that easily accommodates this. That's you know, uh, you know special revenue funds have a very specific purpose for my reading. So right. I'm not, I think probably the way we're doing it is the right way. Are we proposing right. it? So, so Mark, Mark, the, the funds that we just discussed now, these are temporary funds. Well, it's it's just a way to establish this fund and, and finance it going forward. And, and uh, there's nothing that says we can't make fund transfers if we decide we really don't need all of those funds in a particular uh, line item. I mean, that would just be a fund transfer to some other other budgetary line item, correct, Derek and Barbara? That's something the Board of Selectmen would be able to do. So you've established the funds. So, yeah. And, you know, just back to that question about how to categorize them, I started looking through the financial statements. And for example, there's a section in the 
in the financials called non-major capital project fund and the times farm bridge happens to be there um so how i i really couldn't make heads nor tails of how this is categorized so okay. i know it even was predated mahoney sable because all of these funds were set up before they part of the financial statement presentation okay. but right now they're just listed in your budget all as fund transfers so you just move them out of the expense and move them into a fund and then from there it'll go into the financial statements in presumably some some um rational um manner so in the kirk to answer your question the advantage of those funds is they don't go away at the end of the year so if like for instance the road and culvert fund um or the existing fire department equipment fund, if we put money in that, you know, we understand that not everything that gets spent this year, uh, not every dime will be spent this year. Um, for instance, if by some reason we only did $30,000 worth of tree removal this year, then the fund would be sitting there at the beginning of the next capital year with $20,000 in it but it would still be available for use. So it just gives us the flexibility to spend it kind of when we need it without constantly going back to town meeting, um, right. you know. But my, basically my question is what happens when all the tree work's done, all the culverts work's done, you've paved every road in town, you know, I understand <laughs> they're, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna be long standing uh, uh, funds, but um, there has to, uh, doesn't there have to be an end to it some sometime? They can be closed out any time, any time. Okay, that's that, that's my that's that's my, exactly. my question. Any time yeah. the 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 finance board may want to make a recommendation to the board of selectmen. We just don't okay. spend money here anymore, and they the money could be transferred to another another fund. Sure, it's, 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 we wouldn't wouldn't have to fund it every year either. We just correct. Right. Right. It's, it's, right. it's, it's still a little different than say the fire engine fund, the town equipment fund meaning the dump trucks and, you know, plows and things like that. And also the, uh, you know, our uh, community center slash senior center fund. Um, those, uh, they don't fall in the same category, do they? Um, they're, they, they are, they follow the same pattern. Okay. So they exist to be spent. And some of the funds you add to, you know, like equipment funds, you may, continue to add money, buy something, but keep the fund open because you're, you know, you're constantly funding the next um, piece of equipment or some of these, if they just come to a useful end or um, then they can be closed out. Right. Okay. And um, that's something even the auditors would encourage you to do if, you know, you just don't want them sitting in your financials year after year. Right. And, and Kirk, just so that you know, we're going to have a motion for the board of selectmen because the Board of Selectmen is the entity that can close out a fund and dispose of the money in the fund through a fund transfer or reassign it back to the un unexpended fund balance. So what we are going to do is we are going to motion for the Board of Selectmen to get rid of some of the funds that we just don't think we need right now. There's a, still money in an AES expansion fund. We're kicking all that money back out. We are stripping away the all but about fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand dollars out of the what's left in the Times Farm Bridge Fund, um, and we're getting rid of the library, the new library fund, because we've, you know, accepted the fact that we're not building a new library anytime in the next forty years. Uh, so we are doing that. We are going back and taking. We took a look at every fund we have and funds that we don't think we're going to be using. Oh, and we're getting rid of the Public Works Building Improvement Fund because we're putting that money in the town-wide building improvement fund, essentially. So we are going back through and, and stripping and getting rid of as many of the unused and unnecessary funds as, as we can. So the, the haunting of the previous administrations is uh, soon to come to a close? Oh, uh, you know, there, 
there's a lot there were there's a lot of money we're repurposing that were socked away in places where it really just wasn't being utilized probably okay. at the time it That's was put point. there they were anticipating using it um but you know that that time is over okay thank you good question kurt um other questions comments from the board All right, hearing none, I'm gonna call for a vote. Uh, Diane? Aye. Rob? Aye. Linda? Aye. Louise? Aye. Kurt? Aye. I also vote aye. That motion uh, passes unanimously, create the funds as stated, and declares their intent to be used uh, for the reasons stated. Okay. Thank you guys. All right. Um, <clears throat> any further discussion on the town budget or any ideas or motions before the board? Okay, hearing none, I guess we'll move on to item number nine, the approval of the meeting minutes for prior meetings. We have three meetings. We need to review the minutes and approve. Uh, 9A is the Wednesday, April 22, 2020, regular meeting minutes. You might want to make a motion to approve those meetings. A motion. Motions to approve the minute, meeting minutes for the 22nd, April 22nd. Anybody second that motion? Second. Rob seconds, thank you. Okay, we'll take a discussion. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Diane? Aye. Rob? Aye. Linda? Aye. Louise? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Okay, and I'll vote aye also. Motion passes unanimously. Move on to item 9B. Wednesday, April 29, 2020, special meeting minutes. I have a motion to approve those minutes. I move we approve the minutes for the 29th. Rob moves to approve. Second? Second. Second. Oh. Diane got it. Diane got it. <laughs> Diane, Diane seconds the motion. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and for a vote. Uh, Diane? Aye. Rob? Aye. Linda? Aye. Louise? Aye. And Kurt? Aye. I also vote aye. That passes unanimously. Move on to item 9C, which is the approval of the meeting minutes for Wednesday, May 6th. Uh, we have a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Motion. <laughs> Louise motions to approve to the meeting approve. minutes for the 6th, May 6th. Do we have a second? A second. Five seconds. Any discussion? No. Excuse me a second. Go ahead and take a vote, Diane. Aye. Rob? Aye. Linda? Aye. Uh, Louise? Aye. And Kurt? Aye. I'll also vote aye. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, item 10 is liaison reports. Um, I don't have anything from the software committee or anything. Um, Linda, do you have any updates on the, on the AHM? Um, not, not really. They're trying to do their best um, with the situation and the social workers are still seeing their uh, students, you know, virtually just like everybody and uh they're the, they have a meeting monday night so it, it's kind of hard when you are meetings the ahm meeting and the board of finance meetings are almost a month apart <laughs> yeah okay. so it's, yeah it's tuesday so okay so one quick note on that ahm did last week finally adopt a budget um that budget was exactly what is in our budget which is why I didn't really mention that. They just 
They had been, there were some holdouts in the town of Marlboro with adopting it. They finally decided to get on board, but since we had already budgeted for that exact amount, we didn't really discuss it earlier. Good point. Thanks, Garrett, for the clarification. Okay. Anybody have anything else to add? Okay, I guess we'll move to item 11, which is the board open discussion. Is there anything else the board uh, would like to discuss? Anything to bring forward? Hi, uh, I, go ahead, I just want to mention that leading up to this meeting, I, don't, I didn't receive any emails from anybody. The only information I got about this town meeting is, is I went on the town website today. I haven't gotten any emails for weeks. On your Andover email or on I your don't personal? use the Andover email. Okay. Linda uses her personal email and got I it. was having trouble getting through to her. So what I'm gonna do is send them from our town Gmail account. Is that do you have a Yahoo account? No. It's a Comcast account. Hmm. Comcast. You know, we were having problems with Comcast not too long ago. Um, and the problems turned out to be mostly on the Comcast end surprisingly enough, because we have like we have a real hard time emailing anybody with the Yahoo account. We are finally got a got agreement from the Board of Selectmen to transition the town to Office 365. So I suspect within the next couple of months, we will have a, a, a reliable email provider for the town, which we really don't now. So if you didn't get it, Linda, I'm sorry. Um, you might check with Comcast, though, because in cases where we had problems with Comcast, we the problems turned out to be at your end, not at our end. Okay, I but I, I just so you know, I did look in my junk file. I yeah, before okay. I delete okay. that, there, so it wasn't sure go there. And, and the other can... thing I I wanted to mention is I thought the parade was great. Oh, good. Enjoyed the parade. In, in regards to, go ahead. Uh, so back up. Linda, you didn't get an email from me today? No. Either? Really? Okay, because I saw the one that Amanda had sent. I didn't see your personal email on it, so I forwarded that along with when I updated. So, yeah, something's going on. Okay. On the same issue, um, up until recently, or at least for a certain stretch, I was getting emails in both my personal account and the town account. And um, like Linda, uh, I did get, I do check the town account just not as often as my personal. And I did have the emails in my town account for this, uh, this meeting, but zero in my personal account. Now, I have a Gmail account. So what so. I've been doing is blind copying all the personal emails. So maybe that's one of the issues. I'm not sure. Um, but from now on, is it okay if I just send it out to both? Just, just CC it. Yeah, that's fine. You know, you don't have to BCC me. Um, but yeah, just, it was odd because I got a pop-up reminder because I had plugged it into my phone and went, oh my God, there's a meeting tonight. I had completely forgotten because the passage of time is shot right now. Uh, <laughs> so, but no, I, I like Linda, if I, if I hadn't set up that town account, I wouldn't have gotten any of this stuff. So um, I don't you know, know why. We, we may want to look uh, just as a thought for this going forward is, is setting up uh, and I don't know if there's something that the town or the uh, IT people can help people with, but on the town accounts, I'm pretty sure you can set up automatic forwarding. So that might be something that we end up helping people do. Um, it will mean that they'll get duplicate emails, but they're going to get them anyway, probably. So, you know, I think that that might be one way to get around it. I'll, I might play around with that and see. That's a great point, Mark. And I apologize. I've had email troubles too. I am right now with my attachments. I know a lot of people are, so I think we're all hoping with the transition, things will be better and some of these things will just go away, some of the issues. Okay, fingers crossed. Okay. okay. Kurt, you were starting to say something earlier. Um, yeah, I, I, you had a, a thought for uh, for next, next budget season, which should be fantastic, I'm sure. Um, we have a, uh, our rep, Stephanie Bancroft, like I mentioned last meeting, is our new uh, RAM Board of Education chairwoman. She's from uh, from town here, know her very well. Um, Dave Gustanian is uh, resigning from the board, so we'll get a new member. I guess uh, four or five plus people have come forward that want to uh, 
represents our second spot. But um, I just want to make a note that next year, uh, come budget time, we really get them involved in our Graham discussions so that there's no questions, uh, you know, between us, the Board of Selectmen, and any, anything else. So uh, they're more than willing to share. And so I said, especially now with, with Stephanie, who was the secretary, now being the chairwoman, um, to discuss so there's no surprises or anything else when we start talking about RAM next year. That's just, just a, a point I wanted to make. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think Eric made the point earlier in the budget discussions about the need to have the people in town speak up and participate, which you know didn't seem to be happening as much as, uh, as, as would probably be helpful or be in our interest, so. Correct. Any other items anybody wants to bring up? Questions or concerns or thoughts? Thank you all for your efforts through this pretty long grueling budget season. You're welcome. Thank you, Eric. Thank, Thank you, Amanda, Barbara. Okay, hearing no more board open discussion, we'll move on to agenda item 12, which again is uh, our second session of public uh, participation, public speak. Amanda, you want to go around? Okay, so first up we have Rochelle Strimple. Nothing, thank you. Thank you. Joanne Hebert. Yeah, I'll say a couple words. I don't want to be the Debbie Downer, but um, I just wanted to state for the record that it would have been highly disappointed if you had all, you know, gone back and added money back into the Board of Ed budget. You know, it took such a hard, long meeting just to get it to that point. And let's not forget they had a huge, you know, surplus this year where they're able to fund $60,000 of next year's budget items with this year's money. I mean, I realize we have COVID, but I think they were going to, you know, they paid down a lot of their bills and they were still gonna have a surplus. So I just kind of wanna, since I do take the time to go to all these meetings, RAM, Board of Ed, you know, I am, a little bit disappointed that there's not carryover that like all of the information isn't always there for all of you that are making decisions and you know at different points um, but again let's not forget they had a surplus they're going to be okay i think they'll do okay without that extra thirteen thousand. so thank goodness you guys didn't do that and just one other thing that would be really great as someone that does listen into everything um on the town side, because you're going to be doing some reallocating because, of, you know, there's money left over and plenty of things to fund, I know, and that will go to good use. It would be nice to have a total on that so we could get, like, is it 100000 left over? Is it 50000 um, Yeah. Other than that, thank you. Let's get a little more facts. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Julianne. Jenny Morrell? No, thank you. Thank you, Melissa Latesca. All set, thank you. Diane, is that you? Diane Grant? Yeah, yeah, that would be me. Yes, thank you. Um, I have nothing really to add, just uh, thank you to everybody. I know this was a, a bad, um, year for the budget and i think you guys did a great job and uh, um thank you all very much for all your efforts thank you diane thank you ann and jerry crumb <coughs> ann and jerry are you there And Michelle, I know you're from the Journal Inquirer. Did you want to participate in public speak? I'm all set, thank you. Okay, thank you. I think that's it. Mark, you're muted again. Mark, you're... I just unmuted you. I'm, I'm all clear now. I'm, I'm laughing at myself because I do this about four times a day for business and, and uh, I, I guess I'm just, uh, 
still getting the hang of it. Uh, so I just wanted to say that uh, that concludes uh, the end of our agenda items um, that we have listed, anything we need to take action on. I personally would like to thank the Board of Finance members, Eric, Amanda, uh, Barbara, the Board of Selectmen, and, and all the public who have contributed to this process. It's not what we wanted to do this year. Um, it's It's been tough at times. There's been disagreement and discussion, but it's been positive and professional. And uh, I think we all appreciate that. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, and with that, I think we can probably conclude if anybody wants to make a motion for adjournment. Before that, I'd like to um, note that um, you're such a great facilitator, Mark. I, we, I appreciate and I think the whole board appreciates what you have brought to the table. Yeah. Thank you, Louise. I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> Me too. Great meetings. Too. I didn't want to do it. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Rob. Motion to adjourn. Uh, I'm going to presume that we've already had our discussion on this and go around. Uh, <laughs> Diane? I. Okay. I'm trying to keep the same order, but you guys moved around on my screen. Aye. Rob, yeah. <laughs> Linda? Aye. Okay. Uh, Louise? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Okay. I'll also vote aye. I think that's everybody. Uh, motion passes, and uh, that concludes our meeting. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, I hope we'll see each other in person soon.